conservative their media peeps, what's up? It's me, John D. Villarreal, and we've got Paul at Villarreal over there. Shanahan versus McNabb situation, Paul. What kind of war of words have they been talking over there? Yeah, John, what's going on there is uh, there's, you know, John, Donovan McNabb got benched for the final three games of the season. And the reason for that is because the Redskins were officially eliminated for the playoffs. And Coach uh, Mike Shanahan said they wanted to evaluate the, the other quarterbacks on the roster. And the kind of the backstory here is that Donovan McNabb, the, the, uh, the conversation goes kind of uh, unnamed sources on, on the team are saying, look, he really didn't learn the playbook, really isn't a good fit for the Shanahan system, you know, misses receivers, you know, throws the ball into the ground, this type of thing. But, you know, there's a perception of Donovan McNabb that he's really been really good and really successful, so you kind of have to handle it a little bit delicately. But now it's kind of exploded where Donovan McNabb's agent is saying that, you know, Donovan McNabb was disrespected and all this stuff. And so now Donovan McNabb's agent or Donovan McNabb himself said that he wants to come back to Washington, D.C. And Mike Shanahan was like, yeah, yeah, sure. We're welcome you back and everything as long as you're willing to be a backup. <laughs> okay, uh, hold on. As Paul just said, in the Donovan McNabb versus Shanahan situation, Donovan McNabb said that he wasn't, supposedly he wasn't told about this thing, about the change before they did it. I, I didn't know that they had to check in with Donovan McNabb before, before the coaches and the GM make a move. I didn't know that. I, uh, it's good, good, good to know about that. And then on his radio show, he, in Washington, he said that he, quote, quote, it felt that he was disrespected. Um, and now we've had situations where his agent was saying that they that Don McNabb had had tips to uh, change or tune up the offense or improve the offense, and and that they use these tips against Dallas. Well, wait a minute. So now is da and, and, and so now is Donovan McNabb the offensive coordinator? That's very interesting because if Donovan McNabb is the offensive coordinator, then I get you know in in, in uh, 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 de facto, if you will, offensive OC then I guess we can really blame Don McNabb for each and every one of those losses because you're not going to convince me that somehow or another that they took Don McNabb's OC type of uh, um, uh, suggestions in the one game that he wasn't playing, but then all the other 13 games that he was actually playing, that they didn't take any of his suggestions and he wasn't running the offense there at, or he wasn't even calling his own audibles. Are you really? That is a, such a facial. I can't even believe that. But like Paul says, this war of words is heating up because it seems that Donovan McNabb is trying to position himself and, and to come back there and collect. Because remember, if he even does one snap with the um, Washington Redskins, he gets $10 million. But this thing has been heating up. I mean, it heated up when he was first benched, and then there was this pressure to do this 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 re extend his contract. I mean, how many times have you seen that? A contract extended after a guy is benched. Okay, and now it's getting even crazier. What do you think is going on, Paul? And, and, and what kinds of, where, what is the real positioning here? And what other kinds of things are these guys saying between uh, McNabb and, and uh, the Redskins? Well, the real position, the real situation is this. The Shanahan's, Donovan McNabb, is just not going to be able to get it done in their offense going forward. And so they're basically, you know, they, they kind of said that to themselves but they can't say it publicly. They're trying to handle it delicately. But right now, McNabb's trying to press the situation, and so it's forcing uh, Shanahan, the head coach, to say, look, you know, yeah, we'll have you as a backup. You know, in other words, no, you're not going to be starting here anymore, even though, you know, there's a bonus that he's due to get early next year, of like $10 million or something, if he's uh, playing there in Washington. But the, the, the general consensus is he's not going to be in Washington anymore. He shouldn't be in Washington anymore. Why, what, if you're the Washington Redskins, why would you pay that guy $10 million? What, you t please, show me other co quarterbacks making $10 million, and I'll show you quarterbacks that are definitely a lot better than Donovan McNabb. And here's the question that I have. Why is the news media so much on Donovan McNabb's side? And, and we see how they treated, you can see clearly the distinction of how they treated Donovan McNabb and his, um, let's say, dispute with head coach Mike Shanahan, and they say, oh, well, Donovan McNabb has six Pro Bowl rings. First of all, the, four of those were pretty soft, where he got in there because of injuries other people that didn't want to play. Okay, only two of those would I consider that he quote-unquote earned, and one of those being where, you know, he was teamed up with future absolute Hall of Famer Terrell Owens, who he had a dispute with, and Terrell Owens looks like he's been right, and we've been right, and Rush has been right, and McNabb's been wrong. But, you know, look at Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan has two Super Bowl rings. So you want to try to pull that Pro Bowl, this is a two Super Bowl rings, okay? So you can't say anything about that. 
But more specifically, I'm concerned about the, the contrasting the media uh, treatment of this whole McNabb versus Shanahan situation between the way they handled the way they handled uh, Albert Hainsworth, who everybody knows is unbelievably super talented, much more talented at his position than Don McNabb is at his position, where they were basically like, oh, Hainsworth doesn't, I could do this, like, you know, they had, I remember I was watching something, they had Mike Golick running the drills, oh, I can do these drills, you know, and, and, and Golick had been retired for ESPN, whatever, and making it seem like Albert Hainsworth was disgruntled and lazy, and, and Mike Shanahan was cracking down, and it was making his team, and he was, it made, a lot of the media made it seem like Mike Shanahan was the big hero in that situation. Now you have this situation between McNabb and Shanahan, and Mike Shanahan <coughs> is trying to run his his team correctly and get it winning again, and Mike Shanahan's the bad guy in the media, Paul. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to portray him as the bad guy, and unfortunately, I think there's a lot of people biting on that in, in the D.C. community, but I, I really seems to be is that McDonald is the bad guy here. He just, uh, you know, according to unnamed sources, he just did not want to change his throwing mechanics, which uh, supposedly lead to his inaccurate throws. He did not want to learn the playbook. He just didn't want to, you know, apparently didn't want to be a real professional. Just kind of wanted to, you know, uh, go off of his reputation. And, you know, Mike Shanahan came in there to kind of clean things up and get them back to a winning system. And, you know, if, if your trigger man isn't going along with that, you're not going to win. Yeah, exactly. And, that, and that's the thing. And, and it's so funny because what other quarterbacks do we see that, that somehow get to blame the offense? It's not whatever. I mean, where has that ever worked? I mean, if you're such a great quarterback, such a great elite quarterback, why can't you play in all the systems? I don't understand that. Does anybody really believe that if Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Tom Brady, even Tony Romo, uh, uh, I mean, you, you know, Philip Rivers, I mean, you know, Drew Brees, you go on, Mike Vick were in that offense that they couldn't do better. I mean, is anyone really going to try to make that make that thing? And then I heard uh, 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 Clayton on ESPN saying, "Yeah, Tio will get a job, but but um." Uh, you know, Don McNabb will definitely get a job a lot easier because people still perceive he's an elite quarterback. Uh, what are you smoking, dude? Are you are you kidding me? I I, I think so. Yeah, let, let me let me just say on that point. Look, two guys that are are known in the NFL as quarterback coaches, Andy Reid and Mike Shanahan, both are. They both gave up on Donovan McNabb within a nine month period. That's not going to help the uh, the resume any. Paul, what do you predict is the next step, and how do you think this is going to play out? Well, I think that um, the next step is going to be uh, Donovan Knapp has his most leverage in the next two weeks while the NFL season is still going on, the, the regular season. After that, nobody will care. People just won't be thinking about it. And so uh, what it appears to be is that he and his man, uh, his agent are looking at, to get Donovan McNabb released or traded to wherever it is that he wants to go to. Some of the teams that have been mentioned are Arizona, where McNabb lives in the offseason, Minnesota, and also San Francisco. Um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what's going to happen because it depends on what uh, Daniel Snyder, the owner of the team, wants to do. And that's why uh, McNabb and, and, and his, uh, his team are trying to ratchet up public pressure. My guess is that nothing's going to happen. Um, and then uh, it'll just extend into the offseason. But we'll see. Who knows? We don't know. I, I mean, first of all, there's problems with him going to Arizona. That's number one. Uh, uh, num number, And we can go over those. Number two, there's definitely problems with him going to Minnesota. I mean, first of all, we don't know what Brett Favre's going to do. I mean, there, it's almost like the media is trying to, like, like Russia is saying, you know, oh, you know, just leave it to the media. They've got a, they, they, they can handle McNabb's career. They've got it all figured out and stuff like that. It's like, dude, are you really trying to kick Favre out of there before he's made an official decision and stuff like that? I don't care what he's saying now. We need to see what he's saying in, in August and stuff like that. Does anyone really, I don't care, I mean, you know, Favre was doing great a lot this year and then he got hurt, this and that, whatever. Do you really, really believe that, uh, um, he can somehow, McNabb can somehow do better than Favre in, uh, in Minnesota. You know, particularly if they have to start playing outdoors and stuff. You're crazy, dude. You're crazy. There's no way. Do you think that those, those players are going to respect McNabb anywhere near the Favre? He's going to have the toughness? I mean, get out of here. It's, it's, um, it's unbelievable. I mean, I can't, even, I can't even believe that. And as far as, like, San Francisco, whatever. 
You know, I mean, and that's a, I don't know. I think it's a I think it's actually super super hilarious. And I wouldn't even be totally surprised if we'd see both uh, McNabb and T.O. Uh, like on somewhere like the Raiders or someone like the San Francisco 49ers or something like that because T.O. played for San Francisco before, you know, and the Raiders like to pick up, you know, if, if no one else bites on, on, on T.O., which they certainly should, I could see them take a bite on me. T.O.'s going to play two more years if he can, and he's definitely going to have stats that nobody can deny him first ballot Hall of Fame uh, induction if, if they're even reasonable. Whereas McNabb, I think this year he's really shown himself to be a non-Hall of Fame QB, and I think that's going to stick with him. For Conservative Media, I am John, that is Paul, and we'll see you next time.